Hey, we're back. This should be the final teaching on uh, James chapter 2. I love how God says, how Christ says that he is the vine and we are the branches. I like that because it's not the branches that bear the fruit, it's the vine. If we can keep our eyes, you know, focused on the answer, on the vine, on Jesus Christ, we will have a lot of fruit. See, the fruit's already there and the fruit maker's already there. We just need to trust in him and have a faith in a resting place that realizes God's got us, that God's going to complete the very thing he has started in us, Philippians 1, 6. So, most uh, human beings, they haven't seen true love and we need to look in the Bible to really find it. But our ability as Christians is to absorb because we have already have inside of us God who is love. God is love. He came to dwell inside of us. So what we, uh, what we do as Christians is we go around and display the love of God to other people. And that's what James is talking about at the very beginning. If you really love, and you know, have the love of God and God's faith, then you're going to step out and you're going to help people naturally. It's, it's just something natural because you're compelled, you are empowered, you are invigorated because of love. That's what compels us. It's what compelled Jesus was his love for us. You know, he endured the cross, despising the shame. But see, he did all that because he had his eyes focused on what he was going to do for you. And for me, we need to take it personal. So, uh, God is revealing the hidden things we see now through uh, a glass, kind of dimly, you know. Uh, but we're going to see Him face to face, and that's a great—that's a great thing to know and to realize that someday we will see Him face to face, and we know He's going to be big and strong because He's going to be taking some heavy-duty hugs. You know, Jesus, what He's done for us, oh. If I think too much on it, I'll have tears running down my face because I realize, you know, I love him much because I've been forgiven much. Not because I've done a lot more sin than you or, or than anybody else. It's because I realize he has forgiven me of things that I was unworthy to be forgiven of. You know, I didn't deserve his salvation. And anybody who tries to say that we need to deserve his salvation, that's preposterous. It's ridiculous. It's like mixing our sweat with his blood. And that to me is unholy and unpure. So the main thing that Christians need to ask themselves, how did I become a Christian? How am I a Christian? Am I a Christian? <laughs> and if so, how? What is the very foundation? And stick on that once you get it because the world will try to steal that from you. By grace, you're saved through faith. And what, what is faith? Faith, there's a two-sided coin to faith. One side is hearing the word, and the other one is believing. It's a call and response. That's what, that's what Christianity is. It's call and response. So God called, Abraham responded. God called, uh, Rahab responded. Over and over and over in the Bible? No. Did it talk about their sins? No. What did it talk about? They believed God. Yeah. Amen. So God's revealing the, the hidden things. Uh, you know, I have not seen nor ear heard nor entered the heart of man. The things that God has revealed to those whom he loves or who loves him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yea, even the deep things of God. The deep things of God are known inside your spiritual being. And it'll search it out and bear witness to you. As you study God's Word, He's got more for you each and every day. It doesn't matter if you're a Christian a long time. I've been a Christian since I was 15. And let me see. I'm 63 now, so it's been a while. That doesn't mean I led a perfect life. I don't need one now. <laughs> but Jesus did, has, and He counted it to me. And because of that, I can step out in faith, in knowing God's for me and not against me, in knowing that I've already reached the destination. I'm going to heaven. I'm not working my way to heaven. 
That destination belongs to me already, signed, sealed, delivered because of what Jesus did, not because of what I did, do, or will do. And so now God leads me, leaves me in this place right now of, okay, you're 100% accepted. You don't have to do anything. I don't have to do anything for God right now to become a Christian or to stay a Christian. Do, 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 do. <laughs> but I get to, and I want to, because his love has filled my heart and it compels me not to try to get God to accept me, but because I already am. That's the power to do. So I thank God for what he has done, what he has done. Thank you. We don't sin in our spirit being because we have been sealed. We are 100% guaranteed to God, uh, signed, sealed, and delivered. And God has come to live in you. He Ephesians 13, 5. 13 5. He, he 5. came to live in you. He's not going to leave you or forsake you when everybody else forsakes you and everybody else leaves you. He's with you. I mean, I've been alone, alone, alone uh, in my flesh. But in my spirit being, God was there to take my hand and get me through. So what we need to do is we need to realize what the real question is. What does it take to become a born-again son of God? Well, by grace you're saved through faith. You're saved through faith. This is all things having to do with salvation. You are saved through trusting God. Well, what is faith? Faith is hearing the word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now what do we do? Now we put it into action. Otherwise, it's faith without works is dead. Now if you want to put actions to it, now you're going to get into uh, John 6, uh, 28 and 29, where they said to him, What shall we do that we may work the works of God? They said to Jesus, What do we have to do? to work the works of God. And Jesus said to them, this is the work of God that you believe in him whom he has sent. We make the work uh, a whole different thing. Our aspect of thinking is different from God's. That's why he has to take and renew this mind. Been to many, been preaching to many things, many people and stuff, and they come up with, uh, you, you preaching about, oh, but, uh, faith without works is dead. Faith that, yeah, faith without worth, works is dead. What are you talking about? <laughs> they just want to discount everything having to do with trusting God without having some sort of, you know, works that they can see, you know. But when you're talking about spiritual things with God, faith without works is dead. Your faith is not activated. It's just sitting there. You need to activate it. It's a call and response. God called. Are you going to respond? That is your work, to respond. How do you respond? You have faith. Faith without works is dead. Plus, if we look at the faith that we have, we're looking really at the works of Jesus Christ, and we put our faith in those works. And so our works is believing in His works and what He has done. So our justification... Our justification's work is one work, and that is to believe. That is the, the work that you need to add to your faith. Believing. You have faith, right? What does that mean? Well, faith, it's impossible to please God, for he that comes to God must believe that he is, and he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. What's the reward? The reward is salvation. It's born again experience of being a new creation because we have done the very first thing. The first step is seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the things will be added to you. Now wait, seek first the king. What, what's that? That's not all your life seeking first the kingdom of God and you're now going to have righteousness. You did it one time like Abraham did. You did it one time like Hagar did. Hagar, Rahab, <laughs> Rahab, the one time thing, they believed and they ended up having it put to their account being just. But here's the main thing, they weren't born again. Rahab wasn't born again, Abraham wasn't born again. 
No, because the born again experience wasn't released. The covenant wasn't established. Why? Because the covenant is established on the blood of Jesus and he hadn't died yet in the Old Testament. And he didn't die through a lot of the New Testament either until he died in the end of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Then the new covenant kicks in because the testator died. Now we enter into the will of the testator because the testator dies. Now the will belongs to us and we receive the inheritance. What is it? It's the new creation reality. It's the new man, the new woman, the new person you are. The you of you is now changed. You have received it. Thank you. Thank you, Lord God. So they said to him, John 6, 28 and 29, why do you keep saying this? Because I love this. What did they say to him? They said, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? Faith without works is dead. Yeah, I have faith in you, God. I have faith in you, God. Are you believing? If you are, you have it. You have now put into effect the faith and works together of believing. And you've completed the circuitry of life by merely the works of our believing and the faith and the grace that he gave us. By grace, you're saved through faith. Absolutely true. Abe, Abraham, he was justified by works. He believed God and was justified because he responded to God's word. It was a one-time thing. He responded by faith, coming in words, and now he responds by believing the word. We do the same thing. God speaks to us by us reading the word, and we believe it, or we don't. If you do not believe it, then your faith without works is dead. Your faith is there. But it's not activated because you're not putting it into something. Rahab, she was justified by works. She acted in response to a message that she heard. She let the messengers out in secret. She allowed the spies to come in to design the destruction of Jer Jericho and by the Lord's direction. But how many times did Rahab and Abraham do this that led to their justification? Man justified by works, we hear the gospel which brings faith and then we believe the word as truth. And that makes it so God is not a liar to us. First John 5.10, the one who believes in the Son of God has the testimony in himself. The one who does not believe God has made him a liar. Does that mean God is a liar? No, it means in their thinking they have made God a liar. You realize how powerful that is because when we trust God we're making God to be the truth above all in other words he is the tree of life and we went to that instead of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil we believe God as truth when one believes in the son of God has the testimony himself the one who does not believe in God has made him a liar because he has not believed in the testimony that God has given concerning his son first John 5:10. So one must ask themselves, in this life, is it about works of achieving to be accepted by God? And if so, how long do we do them? And how much do we do? When does it become enough? When does enough time elapsed where now we've done enough to be accepted? When does that occur? Is James talking about a whole lifetime of good works? When we're talking about James 2, by the way, we, you have to go back to the other videos to see how there's a building upon one another. Is James talking about a whole lifetime of good works or one time where Abraham believed, one time where Rahab believed and their belief caused an action, but it wasn't the action that caused them to be believers. First you believe, then you act. So faith without works is dead. Without a, without a, there's no fight in that. Faith without works is dead. But what is the works? Believing. You believe. Believing. Abe put his son on his altar, on the altar. He didn't do it over and over again. He did it once. Nor do we have to do over and over to get God to accept us. We don't do anything over and over to get eternal life in Christ. We do a one-time stand and believing and making a decision and a willful decision at that, saying, Christ Jesus, you're our Savior. 
you're our Lord. We're like the thief on the cross. We didn't get down and do a bunch of push-ups. But what he did do is say, remember me when you come into your kingdom. We take a one-time acceptance and believing into the promise of the life in Christ's work on the cross and bam, you are saved. It's instant. And you end up in victory instantly, not in your strength, in your power, in your might, but because you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, his victory becomes your victory. Now you walk on this earth, not as victims, but as victory empowered, enveloped Christians, Christians, anointed ones, walking the earth with God within us, God upon us, God loving us 24-7. Abraham just merely got a word from God instead of just hearing it because he has faith. But now he responds. He responds. He didn't just hear it. He did something about what he heard. He believed what God said and his faith wasn't dead. It wasn't the type of dead faith that just hears. You know? People go and they go to church and they just hear but they're not they're not really listening but they hear it you know but they don't extend belief with it therefore they have faith in them because all people have been given the measure of faith but they're not operating in it they're not allowing it to operate because they're not believing they're not putting the circuit together which is hearing the word or the Word of God going out and receiving the call and the response works Rahab believed in the message she heard from others about this great God that delivers and fights for you she believed the message after she heard it she wasn't uh, dormant or having dead faith instead she put the message uh, that she had heard uh, with her faith she believed because she believed she hid the spies and made it so she and her household would be safe and just like Rahab, we do a one-time action of, of these works of faith by believing. And when we do that, we are justified, just as if we never sinned. We are quite different from what happened to them because they don't, when they believe, they didn't receive the Spirit of God into their life to make them new creations because, like I said, Jesus hadn't borne the sin of the world. He hadn't yet made it so that the covenant would be released uh, because the testator hadn't died yet. But when he bore the sins of the world on the cross, now we become new creations when we believe. They didn't become new creations when they believed, but it was put to their account. But to us, it's not put to our account. We are made. We are now made new creations in Christ. If you have been born again, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away. All things have become new, and all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ. Why? Because inside of our being we are a triune being like i said your spirit being is as whole as perfect as pure hagios it's called in the greek you are holy saints of god you're not trying to be you don't need some church to deem you as being a saint because god did that in christ it became yours but wait a minute i always blow it and uh, uh, i have a propensity towards this sin Brother, you're just focusing on that. Sister, you're just focusing on that. You need to focus on Christ. He's already set you free. Freedom belongs to you. The devil's been lying to you. But the freedom belongs to you. And let me tell you, even in the things you're in now, you're accepted in the beloved and complete in Christ. There's no condemnation for you in your spirit being. You're accepted. And when you do that, you're going to work out your own salvation. Because the salvation that's within you, that's already Christ, you're going to work it from inside your spirit being out into your soul and your mind and your thinking. It's going to happen as you study the Word of God. <sighs> so the only thing a Christian needs to do after they become saved is to study on their new identity. Study on Jesus Christ so that our minds get renewed. That's the only thing we do after we get saved. And our salvation is free. And now mind renewal is free too, but you have to put some effort into it. But when you put effort into it, always remember that there's no condemnation while you're having your mind renewed. Because <laughs> we don't want to be double-minded. 
a double-minded man's unstable in all his ways. When you have the mind of Christ within you and then you have your own mind and it's fighting against it all the time. We just need to go to the Garden of Gethsemane with Jesus. Not my will, or but your will be done. Even Jesus, he had a different will. But yet he succumbed to the love of God and the very mission he was sent to do. And that's us too. We succumb to the love of God realizing he knows better. He'll take care of us and he loves us 24-7, even when we blow it. He loves us. You love your children when they blow it, don't you? What if your child even ended up in jail? Hmm. For a crime he really did. Well, if you're a real man or woman of God, you're going to love that child all the time. Whether they're in trouble or not. Whether they're doing the right thing or not. Because you realize they're a part of you. And Jesus, God, he won't deny himself. Because you're a part of him. And he's not going to deny you. He loves you. He loves you 24-7. And if there was more time, he'd love you then. He loves you into eternity. How's that? How's the world without time? Yeah. Let's see where we're at here. The Christian life, it's not about heaping up a giant history. It's not about loading up your wheelbarrow full of good works to prove that you're deservant of salvation. No, it's not like that. It's a simple childlike trust in God. As Rahab had, what did she have? She heard about this God who wants to help the Hebrews and, and is on their side. That's all you need to do, like Rahab. You don't need to have, oh, but you're not having enough works to be a Christian, excuse me? How do you know if I believed? If I believed, I've done the work to be a Christian. Now, if you want to see me as a Christian, well, I'm going to have to do some works, but I'm going to work out of love. I'm not going to work out of trying to make you accept me or make God accept me. I'm going to work out of being accepted. When you work out of being accepted, you're empowered with this great place of rest, this great place of God's strength. Because in my weakness is his strength. So I'd rather boast in my weakness than in my strength. Hallelujah. We don't want to make God out to be a liar. We want to say, as Abraham did and as Rahab did, your word is truth. Your word is truth. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, that your word is truth. So all these people did, these two as they heard. And they did the work needed to complete the circuit of faith. And like I said, you can have that you can have all the faith you want, but until you hook it up, there's no power that's going to work. It's just dead. But when you hook it up with belief, now you have the power working on your behalf, working on the behalf of everyone, because you believe God, and it's accounted to you for righteousness. You believe God. How simple it is to trust God who becomes now your father. He is your father. So this is a two-step process. The gospel heard, the gospel believed. That's the gospel heard and gospel received. That's when you have received grace and the gift of righteousness because you have heard it and now you believe it. And now your faith without works isn't dead the circuit is flowing and now now the life force the life force comes through your actions comes through your your facial expressions comes through your your love and your works for other people faith attached to our wills and our minds and now we choose to use this faith or it stays dormant dead faith but we don't have dead faith we have we don't have an impotent faith sitting there hearing and hearing and hearing and never coming to the knowledge of the truth but we are those who believe to the salvation of the soul we are the ones who believe and when you are believing the message has been sent and you're believing 
you have the coin of faith both sides you have the gospel being heard and you have the gospel being received or believed therefore you have completed the circuit and so like a body a corpse without the animation of the spirit is dead can you imagine you seen a dead person before I have they don't do much moving they don't do much works but when you take that person that's dead and you breathe into them the breath of life and they become a living soul and so God did he sent his word to dead people and dead people said they had the faith because God said here look I'm gonna put faith in every word so he sends his word and his word is filled with faith and you receive you take his word and you hear it okay I hear it mm. sounds pretty cool God so loved the world he gave his only begotten God so loved the world I'm part of the world and you start turning your unbelief you start getting a a transformation that's happening a manifestation that's occurring inside of you and you've taken the gospel that you heard and instead of having it without faith without works is dead you believe and there it is there it is you have made the completion and now the circuit is complete and life is flowing because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God and in His Word is faith and in every human being is a measure of faith but that's actually the measure but if we don't use it many people will go to hell because they don't use their faith in Christ they might be using their faith in themselves but that isn't getting them anywhere but when you use your faith in Christ it's a completed deal and it's over so there needs to be a response basically there needs to be a response because there's a call so what is the response just like the thief on the cross what was his response he said remember me when you come into your kingdom he said he will it was he didn't do a bunch of stuff I'm trying to get it down this is salvation in the born-again experience not salvation of of your thinking I'm talking about salvation of your spirit being and who you are that person who never sins again because you are a new creation in Christ Jesus is inside of you so what response did the thief on the cross have to make he didn't make any response except have faith and believe and when he did what did he do he actually spoke it it came out of his mouth and Christ said you'll be with me in paradise bro so even as pastors and teachers professors or whatever name you want to give yourself or has been awarded you I have a few names too <laughs> some of them I won't tell you but anyway whatever name you have or title you've been given we need to teach the Bible and show that there is one a hearing and that is faith that's hearing the gospel let's stick with just the gospel and the power of God there is a hearing that's the gospel that is faith there is a believing so this is the second part first part is hearing the gospel that's having faith faith comes by hearing hearing by the Word of God right now there's the second part otherwise you have dormant faith faith that is dead hello second part is believing when you believe into the gospel you are now completed the gospel by your works of believing you have believed now it's a completed circuit this is the two-sided coin of faith our position in Christ is an unmerited position we're not going to use our wheelbarrow full of good deeds as our way to get into God's kingdom no one can buy salvation by all of our good deeds and works you cannot buy your salvation none of our tainted blood sweat and tears can be mixed with the perfect blood of Jesus Christ don't do that this gift came by the payment of the life and the blood of God's very own son don't diminish it by trying to act like you earned it but once you come to that position of realizing that this thing is done on your behalf and you had nothing to do with it except to believe on it and seal 
the works and faith together so that now you have a completed system. This is a free gift. We cannot purchase a free gift. We can't win it with anything that's touched by human, uh, the human condition, the human situation, which is tainted. We receive this perfect gift by humility, standing empowered by the faith that his word has brought, not by what we have done. We see the great physician's work on our heart, the surgery that has been performed by Dr. Love, the love doctor. So grace speaks and it's declaring, come unto me all you weary and heavy laden. It's speaking, it's declaring, the kingdom of God is free, come and enjoy. That's what grace speaks. The law is speaking, God is angry, God is mad at you. He's speaking about sin and they're gonna speak about the consequences of your sin. They're not speaking about life, but Christ, Christ Jesus bought and paid for our redemption. I'm gonna speak about that. I'm gonna boast in what he has done. Is sin out there? Of course it's out there. But why would I preach the problem? Let's preach the antidote. Because when we're, when we're justified and going by grace, the law has no power on us. We're saved by grace. We're saved by His favor. We're saved by our faith and believing in His favor towards us. Everything that we need was given at the time of the new birth. Freedom is free. Deliverance is free. Provision is free. Don't think you have to pay for it. Don't think you have to give money to a church so that you can have freedom. This God of love speaks and shares in awesome generosity. God so loved the world he gave. All he has is free. You have forgiveness is free. Acceptance is free. Healing is free. Deliverance is free. All the promises of God are free. You'll meet your needs. It's free. It's not something you have to work at. Does that mean I don't have to go out and get a job? Of course not. Use some sense here, of course. You need to go out and get a job if you need to get money. <laughs> Don't sit there and be that stupid person at the beginning of our teachings in James 2, uh, 14, where, you know, people have a need and they're just going to pray about it. If you have a need of money and uh, you have the ability to work, get out and work. You know, it's, it's that simple. But as far as God and what He's given to us, He's given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. He gave it to us free. All the promises are free. Come on, come all. It's yelling out throughout the universe. Jesus has done a final work, a fantastic work, a perfect work. You can't add to it. You can't make it better. But what you can do is you can have faith without works or you can have faith with works. Let's have our faith with believing and entering in to all the promises of God. So faith speaks and it, it's, it's speaking and it's requesting a response. And we respond to our lover with love. Father, I just thank you for this teaching. I thank you, Father God, that John 6, 27 and 28 says, do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life. Do not labor which the Son of Man will give you, because God the Father has set his seal on him. Then they said to him, Lord, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? John 6, 27 through 29. Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God that you believe in him whom he has sent. It's simply a call and response. As you and I both know, people have read through the Bible. People have gone to church. They've heard the message. So there was the faith extended through the words because faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. The Word of God conceals and, and houses faith within each seed, incorruptible seed. So it's been sent out. And we've seen so many people, you know, that they can read the Bible and then they come back and, and they don't have a single understanding of it because they don't believe it. 
they had uh, they even had the works that people would want okay uh, faith without works is dead so you got faith right now read the Bible okay there's your works are you saved no <laughs> you're saved when you believe that's how simple it is that's why it belongs to those that are rich and those that are poor it doesn't matter who you are if you're the guy drooling in the gutter or the one in the golden house on top of the mountain it belongs to you and it's all free it's totally free receive receive it by believing and you have done the work and you've completed the channel of salvation by being born again. Amen. I'm going to leave it there. Father, I pray for all those that get to take time and see my videos. I pray, Father God, that they see beyond me and hear you. I pray, God, that, Father, that you would spark a great revelation of understanding and wisdom in our hearts, that we may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent, that we may know you intimately, personally, and fall deeper and deeper in love with you as we will, as we see the truth. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for this beautiful day. And thank you for my beautiful friends.